Right, what we're basically doing is we're building a building, a small shed, three metres by three metres, using bales. Um, there's two different methods you can use with bales. One is where you put a frame up that carries the roof, and you just infill the gaps in the frame with the straw bales. What we're actually doing, we're going to use the bales as actual blocks to take the weight of the roof. So we build the bales up, we make shorter bales where we need, because sometimes you come, you can see now, we have to make a short one to go in the gap here, because they don't always fit in. We, we stack them up just like bricks, so the two below will have one spreading the weight over the two below. But just like when you look at a brick wall, the bricks aren't just one on top of each other, they're actually what's in a called a running bond. We stack them all up, we make custom sized bales where we need it. We stack the bales up to about six bales high, then we'll make a um, we'll take some timber this size and we'll make a ladder which will sit all around the top of the building and joined in the corners. And then if you look here, you can see we've got bits of pipe going down underneath the foundation and coming up the other side and there's a pipe to either side there. So once we've got the bales up to our height we want them, we then make a ladder frame to go on the top. We put a piece of wire down through that pipe, up over the top of our roof plate or our ladder frame, and then we've got a little um, thing called a gripple, which you can tension and it pulls the wires tight, but it doesn't That's let them go back. So every time you pull it, the little wheel turns and it, click, 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 it gets tighter and tighter. So we actually compress the bales to make them really solid. Once that's done, we can then go around with a chainsaw or hedge cutter and trim off all the loose hairy bits and then we'll take this stuff that's in the tubs behind us here which is basically a, a lime mortar which is like a cement but rather than using cement powder it uses lime as the binding agent um, and it's a little bit more flexible so it will the to the straw straw will actually expand and contract slightly throughout the season so it gets more when it dries out contract slightly and as it gets in the dam for cold in the winter it expands slightly so this lime mortar is a little bit flexible whereas the cement render sets really hard and rigid and it will end up probably cracking so we use a lime mortar because it's uh, more flexible and it's also more environmentally friendly there's less co2 produced in making it um, so that's all we're doing basically is we're stacking the bales up and making short customized bales where we need them once we're up to height put our roof plate on put our wires around tension the building all down we bash it into shape it's make sure it's nice and square and level everywhere trim it up and saw go down if we've got any little gaps get the odd small gaps here yeah, stuff them with some loose straw then it'll be covered with render a bit more the roof on. Um, it, it works out usually cheaper because you can see one of these bales across two two pound fifty maybe three pound to do bricks You'd end up probably spending one double down. that in bricks. Then you've yeah. also got the cement to the other join one the bricks together. So it works out probably a third of the price of using bricks. It's also quite um, non-toxic to work with. There's no, you're not having to mess about with cement and bricks and things. Uh, it's a sustainable natural material. So we're not actually like digging up all the resources out of the earth to use our buildings a lot like we do with brick, bricks and blocks. We're actually growing stuff. So next year there will be thousands more bales. We're just coming into harvest time now, so everywhere around the country they're making more and more building blocks. And apart from the use as animal bedding, or maybe around strawberries and in gardening, there's not much use for straw. It's pretty much a waste product. We're, we're utilising a waste product to make buildings out of it. We're not using all the earth's resources to make our buildings. We can make buildings at a sustainable place. As long as we've got bales, we can keep building forever into the future. As long as we keep growing cornflakes and wheat and cereal and cereal So it's going to be a tool shed for tools now? I'm not, I'm not sure. They just said, can you come along and run a course for us to build a shed? And we talked about sizes and they, they wanted two metres square. I said, haven't you allowed for the fact that your walls are this thick? So two metres, you're only going to end up with a metre inside. Well, can we make it three metres? So we have two metres inside. So. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I thought we but looking here I'm thinking maybe not tiny, you know, they should yeah. make straw bales about this big for the yeah. how could they actually do that? Can they, can, I mean there's can, extended sizes but could you, you have can like, cut them in half but it's a little bit tricky but I'm actually got these bales are pretty good I've been of course last weekend and the bales are so loose and horrible yeah. even just picking them up and moving them to where we need to work with them they'll get all misshapen and then 
screen was falling off and you had to literally retie every bale to keep it tight and long, whereas these are actually pretty tight bales and they're pretty square. Some bales of it, the end of it, are angles. Or they've got a big lump on one of them. So. Can they manufacture them and tie them up at like a quarter of the size of this, so for small structures like this? Well, I expect once we get a little bit down the road into the future, yeah. someone will see, ah, oh, why are making this thing to make half bales? Yeah. I can sell it to people who want to build it for them, but I haven't got the space. I haven't got space to go out. They need the interior if they just end up short. I'm sure someone will do it for them. I met a chap at a a steam engine, traction engine rally. And he's got a little tiny steam engine on the table about this big. He's got a little baling machine behind it. He's just taking it through the straw and shoving it into this thing. And the thing was actually ramming it in the tiny up bales. They were about that big. And I said, oh, how many of them? ハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハ
Yeah. So, cheap mortgage for us. So you just got to make sure that you've got a nice coat of rend on all round, and you keep your eye on your end, and if you get any cracks, you repair it before the water can get in there. If you keep on top of it like that, it should last indefinitely. Great stuff. Thank you very much. Okay. Cheers. It wouldn't last if I built it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well,